Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you two things you could do to Lightroom to personalize it. Make it more your own. first thing we're going to talk about is called the identity plate. When you look at Lightroom, if you look over at the top left hand corner, it has LR, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic. That is called the identity plate. The identity plate also shows up in the slideshow print and web modules as well. And you could edit what is shown here. To do that, if you have a Mac, go to the Lightroom Classic menu. If you have a PC, it's under the edit menu and it's called identity plate setup. And when you do that, the identity plate editor comes up. And as I mentioned, by default, it has that LR Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic uh, shown there. And that is the default identity plate. There's also another one in there called the Adobe ID. And if you click on that, it will put your Adobe ID there, my name in this case. You could edit this further. Click the drop down and go to personalized. And you'll see then that we have two options. We could do a stylized text identity plate or a graphical identity plate. And I'll show you them both. Uh, with a stylized text, you could type pretty much anything you'd like here. I'm just going to put photography by Anthony Morganti and you can see it's showing up over there on the left hand side. Now it looks kind of bad, right? Well, we could edit it somewhat. We could change the font, the size of the font and the color of the font. And so uh, if I just want to change my name, so I'll highlight that and I could make it larger, first of all. So you can see now it's larger up there. And I also could change the color. Uh, let's uh, make it blue. All right, so I made it blue. And, um, and I don't need, I could do like this. And I could make it, make it you know, something like that, I guess. And um, I also could then actually change the font itself. So if I want to go here and I want to change it from Helvetica, is that how you say that? Helvetica to let's say Garamond something like that. I could do that as well. I could make it italics. I could make it bold, uh, whatever. So I could change it around. I also could change the photography by if I wanted to change that font to something different, I could do that as well. So you could change uh, that identity plate uh, to whatever you like. Now, I, I don't like that, but let's just say for the sake of argument, I did. Um, then what I could do is I could go up here to where it says custom and I could go to save as and I could call this uh, my lousy identity plate. So I'll put IP, okay? My lousy identity plate. So I'm gonna save it. So I have that saved and I'll click okay for now. Now, if I go over to, let's say the slideshow module and I'm going to do a slideshow, uh, you could see under overlays it has identity plate. And by right now I call this the Anthony Morgetti presentation series, but I could change that by just clicking in this little box here and I could go to my lousy identity plate right there. So now it is there and I could move it around. I could put it down here. I could scale it. Uh, I could change the opacity, make it lighter or darker and scale it larger and smaller and all that. So that is where the identity plate also comes in. But let's go back over to our identity plate itself. And I said, I really don't like that. So we could go to the um, identity plate setup again. And I mentioned, or you could see here that there's a graphical identity plate option as well. So if we click there, uh, it's going to ask us to locate a file. And this is a file that you would have created most often in Photoshop. And I created one very quickly before this video for this demonstration. And it's on my desktop and I called it logo.png and we'll click on that and you can see there it's AM Anthony Morganti Photography. So that is my identity plate. And similarly, I could go over here and I could save this and um, I could give it a name. My, whoops, logo identity plate. Okay, so that then again will show up in the slideshow print in web modules as well if I want to use this on any of those modules or in any of those modules. So I could personalize this identity plate. So that's one thing you could do. I'm just going to go back to my Adobe ID because I like that. We're going to click OK. Now the other thing you could do 
is um, at the bottom of the panels, you could see this little design here. That's called a flourish, and you could see it's on both sides right there as well. You could change that. You could put a logo there if you'd like. And to do that, uh, we're going to go to the Preferences menu. If you have a Mac, it's under Lightroom Classic. If you have a PC, it's under the Edit menu. And we're going to go to Preferences. And we're going to go to the Interface tab. And you can see the very first top, it says Panels, and it says Endmark, a small flourish. You have the option to do none. So you see there's nothing there. Or you have yeah, the option, again, to add your own logo. So we're going to go to the Panel and Marks folder. What you need to do is you need to put your logo in this folder. So we're going to open that folder, and you can see I don't have anything there. Also, you'll have to uh, close Lightroom down and reopen it for this to show up. So I'm going to close Lightroom now. I have that folder open. All right, so it'll close down, and here's that folder. And I have my logo on my desktop. It's the same logo we just used uh, for the uh, identity plate, and I'm going to move it in there. So now it's in that folder, and I could close that down. Now we'll reopen Lightroom. And once we reopen Lightroom, we'll go back to our Preferences dialog box. And again, on the Mac, it's under Lightroom Classic. Under PC, it's under the Edit menu. And we're in that uh, Interface tab. Now we'll go to the End Marks, and we'll go to Logo.png. And you can see there it is showing up uh, underneath where that flourish was. One thing I want to make note of real quick, it has nothing to do with you know, personalizing uh, as far as adding your name or logo to Lightroom. You can see font size right now it's a small default these are the font sizes for like your basic tab and whatnot over here the thing is um if you go to you have two choices small or large if you go to large you'll see nothing happened because you have to close down lightroom and restart it the change between small and large is minute i mean you could barely notice it and a lot of people uh, have problems, especially like on laptops. If you're using a smaller laptop, you can't see very well these, these you know, sliders. The sliders are also really small, so it's difficult to move them in very precise movements when they're smaller. And the font size going to large doesn't have that much of an effect. I just wanted to point that out. Um, so when you do it, you're, if you do go to large, you're going to have to close Lightroom down and reopen it for the change to take effect. And actually for me to even see the change, now I changed it to large, I was on small. For me to even notice the effect, I actually took screenshots of Lightroom to see the difference between the two. And as I mentioned, it's, it's not very big of a difference. It, it looks the same to me almost, but it is larger just very slightly larger, all right? So that, on a side note, that is how you would personalize Lightroom. You could change your identity plate up here in the left-hand corner, and you could have something different show up down here in where the flourishes normally are in underneath the panels. So I hope that maybe just helps you make Lightroom more your own. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>